Ecclesiastes, by the grace of the Lord, second chapter, by the gr chapter 2, Ecclesiastes. I said to my heart, Come now, I will test you with pleasure, enjoy yourself. But behold, this was also vanity. I said, Of laughter, it is mad, and of pleasure. What use is it? I searched with my heart how to cheer my body with wine, my heart still guiding me with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the children of men to do heaven during the few days of their life. And verse 9 of chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 9. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. All he has put in turn in the man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. That is God's gift to man. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. God has done it so that people fear before Him. That which is already has been, and that which is to be already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away. Solomon, the son of King David, his name means peace. And God chose Solomon among all the other male heirs of King David. So he may reign as a king, even though there were, there were other sons of David that were born before him, and thus higher in precedence to the throne. But the Lord overstepped the other male heirs and chose him in a special way. And he revealed Solomon, both to King David and the people of Israel, but first and foremost to King Solomon, by revealing the plan of God's choice to Solomon himself. And as he had predestined for Solomon to become a king after King David, and to reign in righteousness and absolute peace in his time. And the third characteristic of his reign was to construct the and build the temple of God uh, with architect God himself in all details. <clears throat> whom God himself ordered that temple to be built as his dwelling. And in that temple, to have, to have that temple revealed to his people um, so that people can see God. And that was the house of the living God that had to be the pillar foundation of the truth at that time and it was but in the end things changed Solomon is king now he started very well and he had an excellent start because he had under, understood, he had no the ability and the knowledge to
to fulfill the work that God had entrusted him as he was reigning over the people of Israel. He didn't have the ability to reign as a king nor to govern the people of Israel. No the abilities, no strength, no talents. And the nicest characteristic that Solomon had so that Solomon would uh, introduce or present himself humble before God as weak and as little in the eyes of God because w when a man presents himself little in the eyes of God the greater the grace he finds before God to do the work that God has assigned to that person as great that work it is so he went to God to sacrifice with um, uh, about a thousand burning animals and when he and when he offered he his burning sacrifices with a heart with a contrite heart now and as he was saw the Lord trembling the word of God because he knew only in this way there would be the gr favor of God and as he when he presented a sacrifice like that a pleasing sacrifice to God and that night the Lord visited him with a with a shocking question we may say and the even most important thing is that in uh, event was not the question but who was asking that question and Solomon found now himself to ask whatever he wanted from God himself with the ability that God wants to and he's able to perform whatever he would ask from God Solomon knew at that moment that whatever he would ask from God God he would give it to him he didn't have to think much he he answered quickly with a spirit and an attitude of the humble person who who had a contrite heart who was trembling the word of God and he said God I want to fulfill my mission in this life because I cannot do it I want to fulfill the work that you, you entrusted me unless God is with us <coughs> I cannot build this great work and these are the materials that you gave him for this great work as they were delivered by my father David but I don't know what to do with them and he asked even then Lord give me what I do not have a lack because I'm little give me what I need Lord wisdom to know what I need to do and understanding to know how to perform this work and the Lord was pleased and he was pleased with the obedience of Solomon as he was pleased with his son Jesus when he was baptized with with the baptism of repentance when the Lord then testified this is my only begotten son in whom my soul was pleased and as the Lord was pleased now in the case of Solomon because he was pleasing to God <clears throat> and I may say that the heart of the Lord opened he gave him what he asked and all the things he didn't think to ask, wealth, 
glory, goods, more than all the other kings. and even more than the next kings in line. And so Solomon, with all the absolute supplies that God gave him, with wisdom and understanding, he started, and slowly, and quickly, God was prospering everything in Solomon and he was doing, Solomon was performing duly what God wanted him to do. And we see written, who testifies as the preacher, I said in my heart, I wanted to explore everything that's happening to explore everything that's conducted underneath uh, the light of the sun. And because I worked what God has given me to work, because he could have not worked what God had given him. But because what God had given him, his uh, wisdom was increased abundantly more than all the people and his knowledge. And having this immense wisdom and understanding, he reigned over his people and governed them in, in righteousness. He built the Temple of Solomon in uniquely by submitting himself to the Word of God, but even himself, him, he, he created houses, vineyards, he gathered servants and made servants, animals, he gathered silver, gold, rare goods, he, he Whatever he wanted, he gathered and he gained it because he worked what God has given me with zeal and great desire. But the conclusion of that wise person, the one who was reigning in majesty, the conclusion is so simple that even surprises you. What I saw that was good to a person after all my experiences and they're strange. And I even he even explored foolishness and he thought of anything to explore. He didn't leave anything not to be explored. He worked the gift of God in all ways, in all measures, which was the understanding and wisdom of God. And the conclusion is, but now pay attention, the conclusion of the wisdom and understanding is that God gave me to Solomon that under the sun and the earthly and terrestrial matters the Lord didn't give him revelation about the heavenly things. The time he had not come, yet the revelation would come from the Son of Man himself. So the conclusion from all wisdom and power and ability, skill of a unique person underneath heaven and on the earth is very terrifyingly simple and I saw I saw that it's good for a person to eat and drink whatever God gives him and enjoy the fruit of his labor and toil and I and understood that is a gift of God and here 
uh, I'll tell you a little experience that I had. I remember my father-in-law. I met him in in a uh, he, his great age. He told me when I was young, I didn't have money to drink and eat whatever I wanted. I was lacking. When he was a very good man, uh, we had a great relationship. He loved me and loved him too. He said, when when I grew. I started having, I uh, became diabetic and I couldn't enjoy anything. And I thought, I was, I was young, I thought it was strange. And I read, I read this, it is a gift of God to be able to have the ability to eat and drink and to enjoy all goods by the of the labor of your toil this is a gift of God it's the grace of the Lord especially in our times huh? on these latter days and the latter generation were uh, we're experiencing evil times and everything is getting is collapsing not only the environment now we see this in Greece and in all the whole world. The overall economies of the of the nations, the communication of people, the malice of people, the envy of people, the ability of planet Earth to feed by its products the people they live on it and according to the United Nations uh, study only for seven months can the earth the planet earth with the products and pr production can feed uh, can feed the general population listen to this the one quarter of the world population has the ability to drink and eat from all the goods from their work only one quarter of the world population and Solomon a thousand years before Christ or three thousand years before Christ he was able to enjoy the drink and eat and delight in everything his heart wanted to because God, the Lord intervened in the lives of people in an absolute, because God, to the person that is placed before God, the one that God is pleased with, He gives wisdom so that He knows what He needs to do, knowledge how to do it and joy so that he's able to enjoy what God has given and grants to that person now in contrast that God is not pleased with a person who is sinful even if he has all these goods and the ability to drink and and enjoy to enjoy and them he gives him he even though he may drink and may eat he's not enjoying he may be gathering he may be putting aside and in the end and all the things that he gathered without enjoying anything he dies he doesn't know in the end he doesn't even he didn't even know that he had all those goods so the thoughts and contemplation of the wisest person at that time Solomon continues what is the benefit of the person who is that condition to enjoy everything I saw the condition that the Lord put people they're toiling but they're not enjoying but God He did everything well. 
or whatever God is doing is good in the life of a person. The Lord has foredestined good things for a person. Because they're different, and at the time when they're for day for the things they happen, they're different good portion for a person to enjoy when he's 10 years old, 40 years old, 70 years old. For every season, because in a person's life, God would ordain for that person to have something good. Even to the, li the lives of all people, he's given the ability to choose, to decide, and to reject. No other creature has the ability of absolute freedom in their own personal conscience and their thinking and their decision making. Only to a person the Lord has given the ability to think. Despite all these things, a person cannot search out the work that God is doing the beginning and in the end. He's got a mind, but he cannot do it. He cannot search out good, if I may say, to take advantage of God and to receive from God the, the best because he's got, he had mind. I have a good mind, a good intellect. And I'm thinking, uh, it is my best interest to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because this saves me. It is my best interest to ask from the Lord the spirit of a humble person with a contrite heart because it's going to bring blessing in my life. It is my best interest and to seek the coming of the Lord to come to church because with his word he's gonna be he's gonna um, he's gonna comfort me, he's gonna strengthen me, he's gonna lead me, and he's gonna reveal the good, the pleasant and, and peaceful will of God. He's gonna give me the strength to do it for my own good. So knowing according to the wisdom of heaven that God has foredestined or foreknew about everything about a person in the person's life he's given the ability to consider to choose to choose and reject No one can explore the ways of the Lord. He's got mind, he's got thinking, but he cannot search out the ways to get into the depths, uh, the depths of God by himself. He can go, of course, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Thus, I, I, I've learned it's good to a person to be to enjoy to live a happy life and this and second doing what's good so he's pleasing before God what's going to come the life of a person affliction pain if it's pleasing to God what's going to come He's going to delight in his life. What he understood, said Solomon, is it's good to a person, it's a gift of a person, to delight, doing what's good. And he's speaking to people who have got the law, they don't, haven't experienced the grace of Christ yet, and God himself is speaking now. And Solomon is speaking to us, by speaking of the time, to people who haven't entered the depths of God. And the conclusion is, <clears throat> for a person to enjoy his life, to drink, 
a need with delight is a gift of God and God is ready to offer and I've learned something more said Solomon now whatever God has done has already done them has already performed them no one else can add to the what God has done nor can he deduct from what God has done the Lord has foreordained for any one of us to be let's say uh, let's say for some people to be one one meter and ninety centimeters in height it can be shorter or higher for a person uh, he is foreordained to live up to 70 years old not to exceed that to go 71 or or to live shorter lifespan and why God has done this because he kept all his authority in his hands what's happening what happened and what's going to happen in order to give the ability in order to give in order to have a person before God to f experience the fear of God so if I uh, realize in my life everything depends on my manager I'm like a puppet uh, I'm gonna do whatever he wants me to do but I realize it doesn't depend on that person <coughs> neither on my manager and my welfare neither my dad my mom my brother neither my pastor or my elders my life depends exclusively by God the Father and to us through the Lord Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit if I have this absolute knowledge that everything is the hands of the Lord and he can give you or take away from you whatever God wants to he does <coughs> Because only to God is given to is given to observe and to give to people, and only to God has the ability to give and to take away, to do and then to stop. Let me say this emphatically: He can open the door and also in and can also close, and no one can open. And then I realize in the end. And then I realize I am dealing here with the Lord. I depend on Him, I my children. Now they depend on myself. I may sick, but God may heal me. I'm healthy, but I may get sick. I'm rich, but I may get poor. Many rich people become poor. I'm poor, but if I'm seeking the Lord, the Lord is going to show mercy to me. But also know, not only that everything depends on the Lord, but the Lord, through His Word, reveals the way I should walk in. There's only one way I should walk in. That's called Jesus Christ. And with that knowledge, the whatever happened God did it whatever's going to happen God is going to do it We're making one conclusion the unbeliever is foolish he he is idiotic the person who doesn't take advantage I say this with a good meaning. The love of God, the grace of Christ, the fellowship and the power of the Holy Spirit, what is, is he? A foolish, and the foolish said in his heart, there is no God. Absolutely foolish. What God wants from us the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God to realize that it is to our best interest it's good for my family it's the best for all of us 
to make a steadfast decision what's the end of what's the end of all matters Ecclesiastes says let us come to the conclusion of all things the, a person says this has enjoyed everything he has learned sin enjoyment the abundance of sin the transgression violation of the law a person who is absolutely experienced and absolutely wise what is the end of all things fear God if you fear God you're wise keep his commandments because that's the most Im fear God keep his commandments that's the whole duty of man and in the end we're reading now the last verse of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 and 14 God will bring every deed into judgment with with every secret thing whether good or evil today I understood those things the conclusion and the end of all things of every person is are three things first fear God because the fear of God is gonna lead you to his word second fear in God God reveals his commandments to you keep his commandments because that is the whole duty of man And third, be not foolish, because whatever you are doing, whether wicked or good, it's going to come to judgment. Whether you are regenerated, Christian, you are going to come before the throne of Christ to be rewarded for what you've done through your body on this earth, or as a believer, I mean, to be condemned to internal perdition those three things are our whole life <clears throat> the end of all things nothing else has meaning not a health not no glory no the grandchildren youth or age nothing matters brethren do you understand nothing else neither your work nor whether you're on employment nothing else matters only three things matter in the life of a person to fear God and only God whoever fears God and only God fears nothing else because God is with them to keep the commandments of the Lord for the Lord to bless you the fear of God brings safety obedience to the Word of God brings blessing and watch out because the Lord is giving you a, an intellect to, to consider things what, for whatever you're doing the Lord is going to bring it to a judgment unless for everything and anything unless for any mistake you've made with a contrite heart and a humble spirit from the Word of God you repent because to just say the Lord sorry forgive me it's not a repentance I punch to a person I'm sorry and then I'll leave nothing is forgiven that instance forgiveness is a result of humility and a contrite heart and fear and trembling of God for your salvation fear and trembling the Word of God you will come to judgment for everything for what you thought for what you've done for what you saw for what you heard for what you left 
and you for everything will come into judgment fear God so that you the judgment that you will experience will not just be favorable but to hear from the Lord good good and faithful servant